City. And welcome back to coverage here at Grand Prix Oklahoma City. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with TBS. That's right, the Ben Sec. And we are ready for round eight action here. We're playing modern Grixis Death Shadow. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the most boring possible <laughs> option, but maybe the best option for Andrew Beckstrom. On the other side of the table, <coughs> Grixis Death Shadow for Brandon Ayers. I mean, I've actually played a bunch of Grixis Death Shadow, and the mirrors are actually amongst the most fun like matchups because there is a real kind of like raises edge you have to kind of balance on, um, especially when you're trying to like manage your life. And there are some versions of the deck that actually play Lightning Bolt, so you can kind of catch some people unawares if they go too low with their mm -hmm. their shock lands. Speaking of, the race to low <laughs> life totals begins here with these two uh, these two players. Oh, look at that. Stubborn mm. Denial. Just main decking it. I like that. I like that. Brandon doesn't seem to have a lot of the disruption common to the early turns of the Death Shadow deck. A lot of times, this matchup comes down to some of the haymakers at the end because what happens is you basically trade a lot of resources at the beginning, either with Thought Seizes or um, Fatal Pushes, mm -hmm. and then at the end, it's whatever the last thing is standing. And so um, the Delve threats are very good because they escape uh, the Fatal Push. Um, also, usually you'll play one or two Planeswalkers in this deck, and they are really, really good in this matchup. Okay, so th that is one of the ideal last thing standing type yep. cards. Okay. I mean, either version of Liliana is very, very good in, in this matchup because you can just you just need to like uh, continue to gather an advantage, and both those do, do that quite well. It looks like BK, Andrew Beckstrom, is not doing so well with his mana because, I mean, the one way you can tell if you, if you have bad mana is if the basic land shows up early. <laughs> <laughs> and he, his second land was a, was a swamp, and so there's almost zero chance that he would actually naturally play that on turn two. Um, so he's probably going to be short blue and doesn't look like he has... Interesting here, by the way... Um, Brandon is packing two copies of Liliana of the Veil. Beckstrom, the Goose Egg. Ooh, well, that's a huge, huge difference. Yeah, you were just talking about yeah. the Planeswalkers being some of the more repeated forms of advantage, the thing you want left standing. And, and BK, well, he's not ready for it. He's perhaps more aggressive. I don't. He's got two Gurmog Angler, four Death Shadow. Mm -hmm. That's what the other deck has as well. He is maxed out on Snapcaster Mages, where Brandon is not. Yeah, the, the extra step cast of mage, like, really helps in some of the attrition matches, but it's only, like, marginally better than, you know, having, like, a, a more powerful card like Liliana the Veil. They're playing a remarkably similar deck to each other, just a few cards different from these two, but the main difference is what we mentioned before with the uh, Liliana of the Veil times two, and then you see a few different things here in that, for example, Beckstrom's playing two copies of Kolagon's Command and the fourth Snapcaster Mage, where Brandon had to make room somewhere, and he cut a Snapcaster Mage and a Kolagon's Command. Um, also, one Teamer Battle Rage for Ayers, where I don't see any here for Beckstrom, so he can just kind of have that, oops, I got you. Yeah, I, I, I generally don't love the Teamer Battle Rage in the matchup, but I do really like the Liliana's Avail. I think, you know, on balance... I think branded is slightly better, like suited in the the main deck. Um, Colligan's command is very good, but still not as powerful as Liliana the Veil. Um, it's just really, really close. I mean, you know, they're they're off like three or four cards, so it's, it's there's not that many um, edges between them. Speaking of edges, Brandon Ayer is just smashing with Gurmog Angler as Andrew Beckstrom just cannot seem to get his mana to cooperate. The deck doesn't need that many lands, but you're. Uh, your signpost a few minutes ago there about the basic land coming down has really proven to be true here, Ben, as uh, we see Andrew with major major issues not being able to cast any of his blue cards and really not being able to deploy much. He does stick 
a uh, ooh, hello. Yes. No, no, no. I, I like it. That's looking good. Unstable Island, gorgeous. Uh, he does uh, stick a death shadow here, though. But as we were saying before, oh, Liliana comes down with one counter on it, indicating her intention. Get that thing out of here. Yeah, that, th this is really. I mean, I think Andrew is almost too far behind. Yeah, this is the. I want to see some of the cards you're working with. He's just going to stubborn denial it because that's Andrew on his way out of game number one. He's just going to go ahead and scoop him up. Could never get his mana going, and uh, Brandon Ayers really just kind of had his way with him there. Yeah, I mean, the Grixis Death Shadow deck does not have a lot of land. So one of the um, reasons it's, it's such a good deck is it runs at the full... 12 fetch lands in the colors it has, and then it doesn't run many other lands. So it, it, it runs, I think, a grand total of about another maybe six. This one has 18 lands total, right? Brandon stack. Yeah, no, no, 18 lands is pretty common. You'll see some versions that have 19 land. There's so many cantrips in, in, in these decks that you, you actually flood a lot, even with 18 land. But now we're seeing one of the other backup matches. Yeah, this is uh, Joshua Hoffeld. He's playing against Marcel Angelo Zafra. And these players are both at a cool 7-0 and coming into here. Um, and we, in fact, do see Grixis Death Shadow once again playing against uh, more of a mid-range deck here, Abzan. Yeah, actually, one of the good cards against Grixis Death Shadow is um, the Lingering Souls because... Most of the cards that Grixis Death Shadow uses are, they're essentially one for one or maybe two for one. And like those, those one one flies actually are huge deals because you, one, you can block some of the bigger creatures, and two, you can actually pressure um, the non flying. Uh, like Grixis Shadow has no flyers, so it has no way of actually blocking. But they're both on six, so this yes. is kind of turning to a race. And Marcel's actually at four at this point. <laughs> this attack is going to put Joshua to one. Oh, my uh, God. This is about as close as they get. Yeah. <clears throat> so, And, of course, Joshua is hes the one who wins this race as it sits. But any reason? Oh, oh. what is that? Fatal push for the oh. fire, and that's all he needed. Yeah. he, he Good he, landing. Yeah, I think he may have put himself too much in a dangerous spot there because he had a Sterling, um, Sterling Wildwood coming to play tap that turn. So he actually probably should have left two back because if he could, he could actually bridge to the next turn, he m probably uh, he, he didn't put himself at risk, as much at risk. You know how it is, though. Your opponent's at four. <laughs> you want to hit him for two and then hit him for two again. But there's so much removal in the Grixis Death Shadow decks, it's really, really hard to predict against that. Yeah, and of course the 1-1 one, one Flying Spirit token is about as fragile as it could possibly be. Any removal spell on the deck kills it, so... So after sideboarding, let's have a look at these matchups. Um, Brandon Ayers, I think the card he brings in is the Engineered Explosives, is really, really good because it can kill multiple Death Shadows, even though it can kill yours. Um, Colgan's Command is very good for the grinding matchups, especially when you're both empty-handed. The Liliana, the last hope, you want to play another, like, um, Planeswalker. And then the Nile sp Spellbond's pretty good too. So I think I'd bring in those, maybe I'd bring in the extra Stubborn Denial as well. Beckstrom actually has some more Lilianas. He, he, he brings in two Lilianas of the last hope. He also has Engineering ex ex Explosives. Um, and pretty much the same amount of cards as Brandon here. He's a Stubborn Denial, Nile Spellbomb, another Liliana of the Veil. I actually think that they're really, really close to each other after sideboards. They're almost exactly the same deck. Maybe any play draw considerations with that? Um, yes, because you get to cast the first Thought Seize, which I think is the, you know, one of the more important things because... Okay you can break up some some hands that are a little bit more iffy. The ones with one threat in them yeah. or something like that. But um, Andrew Beckstrom does not have a one minor discard spell or at least doesn't choose to play it. I know I saw a thought season Brandon's hand. 
And we see Street Wraith cycled here by Ayers and just the Nile Spellbomb here from Beckstrom. So no threats on the battlefield for either player as of yet. Beckstrom also has cycled a Street Wraith, so he's down to 15 life. He's not quite... Oh, no. Oh, you know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I learned that from you, man. <laughs> I learned it from watching you. That Swamp is does not bode well. Um, this is very similar to the first game, though. He does have blue this time, where before he didn't, he had red. Yeah, he, he, he does have the opportunity to... Like, cycle the Nile Spur Bomb, and he almost definitely will do so at the end of turn, just so he can actually have a chance of getting the red mana that he's missing. The red mana is the is the mana that you need the least, so he he's not completely like dysfunctional right now. Both players playing the full four copies of Opt in their main deck. Cheap interaction, just looking to uh, get some cards in the graveyard, and we see Thoughtseize here from Ayers, and let's take a look at the hand here from Beckstrom. Look at this. He's got Tassiger, Liliana, Snapcaster, Mage, Fatal Push, Death Shadow. Wow, that's a stacked hand. Yeah, it's a pretty good hand. Um, I think that Brandon's almost definitely going to take the Liliana, even though he can't cast it right now. It's possible that he'll go for the Tassiger um, if he does not have a good answer for it in his hand. Um, but Considering that he has two draws for a, for a land right now, one with the, the spell bomb and one of the natural draw, and it's probably likely that he's not able to pressure that Liliana because he's. It's possible that he go f for a uh, no because he ca casting a Death Shadow would just cast it right into a in, into a, uh, a fatal push. That yeah, we this know. is interesting here as well for Nile spell bomb to take down the graveyard there, prevent any. Tassiger shenanigans for Brandon. And also, of course, Brand uh, Andrew is, of course, digging, right? So he wanted to draw that card, and he got there. He actually drew two lands. Yep, so I think he wants to put a threat down. I think the he'll definitely play a Delve threat. I think it's a Tassiger. Delve while the Delvin's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it's actually one of the good things about uh, what happened last turn. Um, the Nile Spore Bomb like, emptied Brandon's graveyard, meaning that his Delve Threats were not going to actually make it into play, like at least in the near future. I mean, I love playing mirror matches. Don't you like playing? Like, it, it feels like the most pure version of Magic where you're, you're kind of like, the only, only difference is how you draw and how good you are. No, I don't like playing mirror matches. Really? Nobody likes playing mirror matches, TBS. Oh. You're the only one. Well, I could play them all day. <laughs> <laughs> any, 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 give me any deck, I'll play the mirror match. <laughs> so, Beckstrom actually plays two threats that turn... Which is good because... Two air quotes, one mana threats well. or whatever, right? It's just <laughs> insane. This deck is absurd. Though that one is just a 1-1, one, one, though. It's dead now. There's actually not that many cards that kill the Delve threats. Um, the, the easy ones are Dismember and uh, Terminate on, on Brandon's deck. So wow, he had both here. Fatal Push and Terminate. A lot of times you'll see, see, see them because you'll Thought Scout them into the graveyard and you'll be able to cast them with Snapcaster. But now, Beckstrom is actually left without threats, which is actually pretty rough there. Yeah, this is kind of interesting, too, because the, another thing that you described earlier in the match, TBS, is certainly playing out. The players are trading resources, right? Yeah. And we haven't seen who is the player with the last threat standing or the last thing standing, because right now nobody has anything. So we have to be patient here as, as viewers and see, all right, well, who can commit back to the board and, and who's going to get things rolling again? Because we saw Andrew's hand a few minutes ago, and it looked really good. And Brandon, he's got six cards in his hand. Though he's actually got rid of most of the cards that he saw since then. The Lilian of has gone, the Death Shadow's gone, the Tassik is gone. Yep. Um, Brandon has a Liliana in his hand that is likely to trump the situation. Um... Well, because Gobag Angler is going to be pretty good. Think about this. Like, a turn ago, he had no graveyard. Now he's actually, yes. like, delving entire ang Angler. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is really a, 
a, a pointed sign here about how crazily fast this deck can just dump cards into the graveyard and take advantage of it. Go ahead, he says. So right now, Brandon Ayers is the one with the threat going on, and now it's on Beckstrom to find it, and Athotsis is not going to get the job done, though. He's going to see, whoa, Snapcaster Mage Liliana, double Death Shadow. Are we done here? Is yeah, that the this, match? This is re like every one of those cards is a problem for from Beckstrom. I mean, Brandon's already at eight. Now, now why? <coughs> wait a minute. Well, I have a question. Go. Why are there two Death Shadows in hand for Brandon Ayers? Why didn't he cast it? Yeah. I think... Can he not get the mana? Like, well, what is the... Like, he, could get, he could get the mana. Okay. Like, I'm <clears throat> snap dad. Goes down. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly why you wouldn't actually fetch that turn. I mean, Brandon clearly had a reason for not doing so. Yeah. And it's not great to keep them in your hand sometimes because obviously, you know, Thoughtseize can, can nab them or Inquisition. But, I mean, if I w were to guess who's advantage in the situation, advantage bar would be pretty far in Brandon's favor. Like, every one of those threats is tremendous. And if he does not have a good solution to this Liliana, this is going to be pretty bad for him. And there it is. And there's a land that goes away. Yeah, it looks like... Now, Beckstrom, yeah. though, does still have Fatal Push in hand, right? Yeah, but it's no, it's no good. That's, I mean, that's one of the things he, he knows that... Yeah, I, I, I was meaning yeah. when we were trying to figure out, uh, you know, if he should play the Death Shadow yeah. there or why he didn't. Perhaps he just doesn't want to play into the Fatal Push. Right. Because if he knows that Liliana's coming, he may be able to just tear apart Andrew's hand. That's and a good point. And force him to discard it. Because I think Andrew's hand is Snapcaster Fatal Push. Does that sound right to you? Uh, that does sound right. We saw both of those cards when he had his hand revealed, and I think they're both still there. It's always fun to put yourself in the seat of one of the players when we're actually watching both. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I th I'm trying to think of a situation that gets him out of this, but it's actually pretty tough. Oh, he found a dismember. That is really, really important. I, I mean, obviously, he's at two... The angler is one of the things that yes. is really hard to kill. Non-pushable. You could push on it all you want. It will not fall. So he, he getting rid of the fatal push is interesting because he knows that there's another death shadow. So and he got rid of it, got rid of it. Remember, Snapcaster Mage, if that's the last card, which I believe it is for Beckstrom, that's a major problem. And it was. Yeah. And that's going to do it. I think that well played from Ayers. That was fun to watch. Maybe I do like mirrors. Mirrors are great. <laughs> this is a lot of like aspects of um, kind of understanding the matchup, understanding which threats are really important. I mean, the, the, the small differences in Brandon's deck actually like kind of amplify themselves in this matchup. Liliana the Veil was an all-star both games. Yep, absolutely. Right, and he also crafted his game plan around Liliana the Veil both games as well, and. It worked out very well for him. So yep. smart stuff from Brandon. Really fun to watch and fun for us to kind of dissect. Wait, why wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. And, you know, we start to piece it together. Let's see how this Grixis Shadow is doing versus Abzan. I think... Uh, <laughs> Marcel kind of got away with it a little bit last, last game. Yeah, Josh opened the door just a little bit, and Marcel said, I'll kindly kick that door yeah. down. And, ooh, but here's Liliana of the Veil for Josh. And, it, and it's and very it's good. Resolve, yeah. And here we go. Let's see if he discards. Yep. Uh, Path, I was thinking he might actually discard a Lingering Souls. Souls. Yep. I know where you were going with that one. And Liliana's good against Death Shadow. It doesn't actually have to be just in the Death Shadow matchup. It's just good against this deck because they don't have any natural ways to kill it. So the only way they can do is like pressure it, and the, the creatures basically die to Liliana, which is why it's so important. Yeah, 
It's about interesting that. about that, right? The Grixis Death Shadow deck is actually relatively threat light. Yep. You know, they, they're not just sitting there running out threat after threat. It plays much like a control deck where they want to establish board dominance while also getting their life total low and then go, here's two five fives and after I've decimated your hand and your board. Ooh, Goyf off the top for Josh. He's going to get to plus Liliana and get rid of something. Yeah, so, so so here's now the problem situation, right? Dismember is what that was. Oh! oh dueling Liliana's and one's foil. <laughs> I know whose side I'm on here. <laughs> also, one is at four rather than That's three. That's true, but That's they don't interact with each other in a particularly meaningful way. They're just plus, 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 plus. Oh, sure. But yeah, perhaps the first one to ultimate. Yep, but he has to minus because he yeah, you must. Know. Must do it. So what Marcel needs to do is actually put a threat down that forces the yep, that forces Joshua to have to minus, and, and they're will. both doing that to each other yep. now. So two to two is the loyalty count now. <laughs> oh, uh, another scavenging news. This is actually really important this turn. Yes, be because I if, if if Marcel bricks, he's kind of forced to uh, to cash in here, right? Yeah, I mean it's yeah no because he plusing he'll just lose Liliana and. That's it. So he's just going to have to minus if he doesn't have something good. And that really puts him f what, super far behind. Yes, that was very fortunate for Josh to go threat, threat. Remember, they're both just stone cold top deck in here. No, and, no cards in here. And that's what happens, I think, with a lot of the, the black mirrors. I mean, because Thought Sees, Inquisition, Liliana strips so many resources out of your hand, you get to these kind of like in states where you're, you're trying to you know, have the last threat. Marcel actually draws a engine explosive, which actually is pretty good here because he's able to set it for three. Oh, that's really good. Yep. Deal with that. Especially if he can go pop it, find a threat here. Yep. So he gets rid of it. Wow, this is true attrition fight. Does he have a threat? One of the benefits, he's actually no, has he an extra passed. land, which is kind of good because Joshua actually has... Ooh, this oh is my god. Josh <laughs> is ripping like a champion. Now he finds Tireless Tracker, though no land. Okay. Marcel really needs a removal spell he here. He just wants to get rid of that champ. Oh, and he has yeah. it. Snapcaster Mage is okay. going to hit Dismember. Put him down to eight. And now he's back ahead. My goodness, this one's going back and forth quickly. Yeah, just haymakers from both sides. Fatal push in hand for Josh. So once again, we can have an empty board. But what can Marcel find? Because he's got stuff of his own. Okay. Field push. Oh, Ooh, boy. This Young is, Pyromancer. Now, this is a really, really like good addition to the deck. There's not, not every version of the deck has Pyromancer. But in these attrition matchups, if, if he draws like a couple cantrips in a row, it's really good. Wow. Okay, how about we make tokens all around here? Remember, Marcel's the one who's lower on life total at 8. And since these spirits have flying... Oh. oh, and there's another Liliana. This time it's the last hope. My God, these guys have been ripping some <laughs> action. What is happening? And now the, the advantage is back on Marcel. But now he needs... Yeah, he, and now Josh needs an answer for Liliana the last hope somehow. Yeah, I mean, he, he's obviously going to send that spirit at Liliana. Like, almost has to. I don't think it makes sense with Marcel only at eight to go to his is face. Is that a Maelstrom Pulse in hand there for Josh? It, it is. is. Wow. He to kill Liliana. Attack for one. He doesn't have any mana to flash back the Lingering Souls in the graveyard. So now it's Lingering Souls in yard plus spirit yeah. versus young Pyromancer, which we all know one cantrip and it's off to the races. I think Joshua's just a barely ahead. It kind of depends if... Yeah. There's a spell this in Marcel's is hand. Just insane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, attack. We know that he has the ability to flash back his lingering souls. Did he find something else? I think he will. Okay. Ooh, so he must have something. Yeah. Uh, what did he oh, find? Another scavenging? No, news? he might even have. Get, get, go, get in the fourth it? one. He may have a siege rhino, which would be a siege rhino. Come on, he can't have drawn that well. That's just absurd. Oh. How about a Grim Flayer and Lingering Souls? That's My God. <laughs> These guys just both agreed to take all the lands <laughs> out of their deck, apparently. Okay. It well. almost feels like they made an agreement yeah. to say, we can just stack your... Like, you can draw whatever card you want. Play accordingly. I think Marcel's a little bit behind now. Oh, but there's a Death Shadow for Marcel. Ooh, okay. Now he has a blocker for the Flayer. Okay. But he's still at six with three power of flying. 
thought sees you? Wait, wait, he doesn't. No, I don't know. I don't cards. I think thought seizing is not. Oh, uh, why? He wants to get a one one and make his death shadow bigger. So the only way, reason I could think that would be correct is if he actually has a team or battle. Team or battle rage. I was thinking yep. the same thing as you, TBS. Because it would really almost. If Joshua bricks here and. Okay, so he's attacking with a flare? That is it's just gonna get eaten. I wonder why Oh, does it have trample? Could he does, it does, he, have, does trample. he have a removal spell? It's lethal on its own. Yes. And I you mean see Marcel's now stacking up a bunch. He oh this is interesting. And he does, he has the win in hand there with another <laughs> insane draw with abrupt decay off the top. I really want to know if Marcel oh had if, if if Marcel had the, the team of battle rage, that would have been the most insane rip. Well, I like my TBSs, not my TBRs. <laughs> um, you're, you, you know what mental magic is? Yes. I love it. Did we just watch mental? Like, were they just <laughs> making up the cards? Just like, you know what I could use yeah. here? Uh, <laughs> and then they just draw it every single time. Wow. Abrupt decay. Finish this things off. I mean, that's what, like, modern is great. There's so many good answers in the format. Mm-hmm. Such that, you know, there's a lot of back and forth going on here. You know, the top decks are really, really important. I mean, you know, a lot of people will say, hey, it, it doesn't come down to, like, skill in these matchups. But actually making sure your threats and answers kind of line up well is really, really important. So deck building becomes very, very important in, in these situations. Like the tiny diff... Yeah, the tiny differences in the Death Shadow Mirror just there made a huge difference. And, you know, as, as I was saying before, Lingering Soul is really, really good in this matchup. I do love me a Lingering Soul, so yeah. I'm not going to lie. Which deck would you rather play? Abzan? I would Versus? rather play the Abzan deck. But well, well, wouldn't be shocked to hear if the Grixis <laughs> deck is just better. But I, I would rather play Abzan. Well, let, let's take it back to the beginning of the tournament. What would you have brought? Um, What's your style? You like my favorite modern deck ever is, well, at the time we called it Rug Delver. Okay. Oh, I love that deck. <laughs> With Tarmogoyf, Delver of Secrets, a bunch of counter spells, mm -hmm. some Snapcaster Mages and Bolts in there. Is that why, why you that love Big Nuts? It's part of the deal. It's part of the deal, yeah. <laughs> um, there, unfortunately, is not an analog for that deck anymore. No, um, not really. It got pushed out by a few... Removal spells, Fatal Push, and a few others uh, have made it basically moot. Yeah. It was really good when uh, Treasure Cruise was around. Yeah. <laughs> I, I played before that even. I mean, that, that was like a blue-red, you know, until it got banned right. thing. I was playing the Goyf version. Okay. I'm all about that Tarmo. You can do that in Legacy. Still play Rug Delvin? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I would if I played Legacy, which I don't. Legacy's a really um, kind of... You know, it's going to be a big format next year with all the team constructed Grand Prix and the, the, the team Grand Prix, uh, the team Pro Tour. I'll tell you what, if you're an enthusiastic legacy player, you're going to be in very high demand. I've been talking to a couple of my friends back home who want to play in the GP and they can't find anybody that plays legacy. I'm actually playing in the, the legacy seat uh, for my team. Uh, in Santa Clara? Yeah. Who, wait, who's your team, TBS? Ben Lundquist and... Um, Mark Hoboholtz. Wow. I was, I was hoping for the triple Ben <laughs> myself, too. But, uh, wow. So I'm playing the Legacy a, a cool that. team. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I've known those guys for a long time. Well, yeah. I mean, always you're definitely the old guy team. You recognize this, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Marcel does not have a second land. Yeah. He had to mulligan and looks like he's kept a one lander. Now... How bad is that for him, though? Because we know that this Death Shadow deck can operate on very few lands. Yeah, but he, what he needs is, like, if that was a watery grave, I would yeah. change my tune a he little could, bit. He could Thought Scour or something. I mean, if he's a... Oh, okay. So he does not have a Fatal Push. All he right. Would, he almost definitely would... Well, this is starting off. to slip away from Marcel, Marcel very, very quickly. Tarmogoyf is going to get in for a couple of damage here, but, you know, that's not going to stay that way yeah. for long. Okay, he pretty much... Probably this turn or bust, that's yeah, it. Yeah. He's going to have to discard here. It's unfortunate, really, yeah. considering how cool the, the, the previous games were. 
Yep. GG. You're not coming back from that. No. no. Not with this deck and not in modern. You just get buried. Yeah. Not with that start, too. I mean, no. Joshua had a totally, two, totally... Two into three. Yep. yep. Probably going to cast a couple of spells here. Now he's just going to go for Tireless Tracker plus Fetch Land, and, and this is over. Yeah. Well, Marcel's going to pick up his first loss here and drop to seven and one with one more round to go today. Not that bad, but Joshua ha uh, Hoffeld, boom. Yeah. Hey, no. Abzan. Plain Abzan just picking on these uh, Grixis <laughs> decks and getting the job done. Yeah, no, I, so many great decks, so many... All right, well, lots of good stuff, and one more round to go. We've got some uh, little commercial break lined up for you. When we come back, though, we'll have more live and recorded action here from Oklahoma City.